great to be back in Iowa. This is my 13th trip here since January. And it is good to be back. And I know there's nothing magical about 13, but it just happens to be that tonight. So make it our lucky night. I'm good, glad to be with you, and I'm looking forward to uh, coming back to the Iowa State Fair. My wife, Susan, will be joining me for that occasion. And this year, we'll be celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary. I actually uh, dated her hitchhiking across America. I don't recommend that to you, but that's how we started, and it lasted. And we've had some wonderful, happy years together, and I want you to know, I know how many grandchildren I have. I have seven. <laughs> I also want to express my appreciation to Governor Kim Reynolds. What an incredible job she's done, and her and the General Assembly here in Iowa that passed the heartbeat bill. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for protecting the life of the unborn and standing for life. In Arkansas, I signed over 30 pro-life bills. Arkansas was known as the number one pro-life state in the nation. I did that as governor, and let me tell you, if I'm president of the United States, I will be a pro-life president. And whenever you speak of values, I also reflect back to growing up on the farm. Dear Gravit, Arkansas, cattle poultry farm, simple life. My mom and dad had high school educations, but they also taught us the value of work, the importance of faith, helping your neighbors, and responsibility. Those are values you can only learn on the farm. Wouldn't it be great if we had a president of the United States that understood small town Iowa farm values and what how important a farm bill is to the agricultural community in this state. I applaud what you do, and we need to continue to support agriculture. I'm looking forward, as I said, to being at the Iowa State Fair. I also want to tell you that I was looking forward to being in the debate in Milwaukee. And it's important for me to be there, as well as the other candidates, my website is asa2024.com. Yes, we could use your dollar. The key to being on the debate is you're in a pocket tonight, and so help us to get there. Let me go on and transition to these are very serious times in which we live. They're serious times because we have an administration right now led by Joseph Biden that has given us a failed policies for the border, and we have no border security. It's a serious time because we have an economy that is struggling, and this last week they announced that we're going to have higher interest rates that impacts your pocketbook, your mortgage payment, your ability of your children to buy their first home, and so we have to get the economy back on track. It's a result of too much spending by the Biden administration. This administration has given us a weak energy policy in which they put all green above all of the above in energy sources. We need to reverse that. And yes, they've given us, with our help, a $32 trillion debt that we're looking at leaving to our children and to our grandchildren. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, these are serious times in which we live. And they're serious also because of the threats abroad that we see from China that is causing trouble in the South China Sea, threatening Taiwan. Uh, to Russia invading a sovereign territory of Ukraine, threatening their freedom and stability in Western Europe that the greatest generation fought to protect. And then you have Iran that in the Persian Gulf is threatening our seagoing vessels. And of course you have Russia as well. And so these are serious times in terms of global threats. And yes, I believe in America that needs to be strong, I believe in an America that needs to assert its leadership and that we should not yield to China's leadership on the world stage. Yes, these are serious times in which we live and our freedoms are at stake. And because these are serious times, we need serious-minded leaders. You know my record and my story. 
I served as the youngest United States attorney in the nation at the age of 31, appointed by President Reagan. I was called upon by the SWAT teams from five different states and the hostage rescue team to go to the hills of northern Arkansas to don a flak jacket and to go out and assist in the negotiation with an armed terrorist group in which they ultimately surrendered after three days, I prosecuted and sent to jail. That was my start in enforcing the law in the United States of America. I've served the United States Congress, which was the last time we balanced a budget in this nation. Way too long, we're overdue. I served as head of the DEA, and yes, I know about the crisis that we have of drug overdoses in America. I came to Iowa during that time fighting and educating people on the methamphetamine scourge that we had at that time. I know what it means to enlist Mexico to help us to go after the cartel, which is what we need to do today. And in the post 9-11 environment, I was called by the President to help lead our border security efforts after 9-11 and the threats that we had from terrorist organizations. And so, yes, I understand crisis and leadership during serious times. As governor, I thought the load was off a little bit. And I governed, we lowered taxes, we improved education, we improved computer science education, and we created 100,000 jobs in our state, growing the private sector of our economy, and then the pandemic came along. And I didn't make every decision perfectly. But let me tell you, there were some decisions I made that were good, and that was to keep our schools open for in-classroom instruction. It was important for our children. And also was one of the few states that did not shelter in place. I knew that you could not say you're an essential business, you're a non-essential businesses, non-essential businesses have to close. If you have providing a job for a family, you're an essential business in my book and we kept them open. And so I've served in times of crisis and in serious times, and I know what needs to be done. We need to secure our border and stop the fentanyl that's coming in and killing our young people. We need to have a pro-growth energy policy that is emphasizing growth and meeting the needs of our economy and not meeting the needs of some environmental concerns. We need to have a balanced budget in our country and move toward that. And we need to grow our economy, reduce regulations. We need to support our military and our veterans. And we need to grow the private sector of our economy faster than the government sector of our economy. <laughs> Fundamental conservative principles. And I have promised that elected president, I will reduce the non-defense workforce in the federal government by 10 percent. That means reducing the administrative state that sets the regulations that govern our businesses. Last week, I announced a plan to reform federal law enforcement. I know how to do it. I know what needs to be done. But this is also a serious moment for our party. I've been a state party chairman, and we've made Arkansas a red state when I started out, we were a red dot in a blue state. We transformed it because of conservative principles and leadership. But the GOP is under threat today. As it stands right now, you will be voting in Iowa while multiple criminal cases are pending against former President Trump. Iowa has an opportunity to say, we as a party, we need a new direction for America and for the GOP. We are a party of individual responsibility, accountability, and support for the rule of law. We must not abandon that. We are the party of Abraham Lincoln. We are the party of Ronald Reagan. And we, it is a time for serious leaders to meet the serious challenges that we have. There is the phrase that's been attributed to Alex de Tocqueville, but it's not actually his. But it is, America is great because she is good. Let's elect a president who will bring out the best of America, the goodness of America, and call upon America to be freer and stronger 
in this troubled world today. I am an optimist about this incredible country that we have. 